Hey, what's up? Welcome to the AV Club Podcast. My guest today is Josh Yarbro. I've been trying to get Josh in the studio for months. And this fool finally hit me back up and was like, I'm ready. I think he had a practice or something like that. He was, he was training for this moment. And so um, I think you guys are going to love this conversation. It was a good, lighthearted um, conversation with Josh. We got to catch up. And I'm a little bit jealous about his muscles. Yeah, I know. A little weird, but um, I'm jealous and I'm also super proud of him. He's freaking jacked. And um, I hate to admit it, but it's true. With that being said, enjoy Josh Yarbrough. Yeah, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Whiskey Morning Coffee. Whiskey Morning Coffee, the only coffee you should drink in the morning. Who doesn't want to have a whiskey morning? Um, not literally with whiskey, but with the Whiskey Morning Coffee. I mean, if you had actual whiskey in the morning, you'd probably have a problem or, um, or be in some serious pain. Maybe physically or psychologically or some sort of pain. Um, and that's not what we're about. We're not about that. We're about just coffee, really coffee, having good mouth pleasure coffee that makes you feel good and wakes you up a little bit. So Whiskey Morning Coffee online, www.whiskeymorningcoffee. I need a promo code still. So go to the website, hit them up, check them out in the stores, buy some merch, buy some coffee, Whiskey Morning Coffee. All right, bro. What's up? Not much, man. How you how you been doing? I've been awesome, man. Yeah? Yeah. I'm trying to get the ball rolling on this again. I mean, I never kind of stopped, but it's cool to like, I'm sure you know this, but like you get waves of momentum really yeah. in anything you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm hitting a wave right now of like that upward momentum. Oh, dude, it's pumping me up. Like this stuff is like so exciting. Dude, it's sweet. I mean, you really do have a pretty cool setup in here. Thank you, bro. Appreciate yeah. it. I've been I've been wanting like to get this set up for like like at least a couple months, and I'm like, mm. dude, just wait, just wait till you move, and it it paid off, bro, because it's freaking. It makes everything so much quicker too. Like editing is just like a breeze I'm sure, now. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Um, dude, what have you been up to, man? Thank first of all, thank you for coming. It's about well, time, dude. I know it was <laughs> overdue. We've been talking about it for. It's been months and months. I feel like yeah. we've been trying to plan it, but I've been so busy with work and all that. And so finally had a little bit of a slowdown this last week. So I actually just uh, quit my last job that I was working at as a geologist. So, dude, that's so crazy. For, first of all, what explain to me what you did at that last job? Obviously, geology is like study of rocks and, and stuff like that. But what exactly did you do? I saw your Instagram pictures of you right, like yeah. in caves and in holes. And mm -hmm. so basically the way that it worked is we were going out and we were assessing undeveloped land and even some developed areas. But we'd go out, we'd look at these sites, we'd be looking for like caves and karst features. So anything cave related, solution cavities, sinkholes, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just little stuff on the surface that you can kind of see. So We'd look at those, we'd find them, we'd mark them, uh, come back eventually if the landowners want us to, and then conduct a phase two survey, which included us just getting a backhoe and then excavating the features. And then some of them turn into caves, some of them are just recharge features. So all of this is based on the Edwards aquifer. Mm -hmm. So it's just protection for the aquifer, but uh, pretty cool stuff whenever you open it up and then you crawl into a cave that like no one's ever been in before. Just something totally new that you discovered it. And then yeah. we'd go in and I'll show you some pictures here, but that's dope, dude. Yeah. We'd map them out. So I was, uh, I was mapping out a lot of these caves doing some exploration stuff, but let's see, here's one. You're like the modern day Christopher Columbus, dude. <laughs> All right. There's one right there. You can check that out. Oh, but let's see. Yeah. So I would map that out. That's how you mapped all this. Yeah. Is that uh, all underground? Is that all? Mm -hmm, Holy yeah. crap. So like, uh, we'd have a survey team and me and our head geologist would kind of switch off on who was drawing the stuff. But mm -hmm. I started learning it and doing, uh, doing a lot of it after right before I was leaving. But right. We'd have a team that come in we'd survey the stuff and, uh, I'd be wow. drawing behind them. So they'd be giving me like data and then I'd be making this. <laughs> that's insane. That's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff, bro. Yeah, it's a, it's a little weird having to get decent at drawing when you haven't really drawn much. Then yeah. It's like you got to be decent at drawing, but you're also going to be doing it underground in the dark and like laying in weird positions and stuff like that. Wow. So, 
you know, you should try next. If you haven't already got a new job, you should try to be the, those persons, uh, those people that sketch the, like, you know, in, in the court cases when they're trying to describe the person. Oh yeah. yeah, you, yeah. Should, you should try to do that, man. I think you could do oh, it. Oh God, that'd come out horrible. <laughs> They'd never find the victims <laughs> or anything like that. That's funny. Uh, so now what are you doing? I uh, actually just accepted a job with Procore Technologies. I don't know if you've heard of them, but software technology company uh, down on 6th Street. So going in oh, as shit. a sales development rep, so trying to move into like an AE role in mm-hmm. a year, but that's the plan. I d- literally completely diverted from geology, which is what my degrees are in and all that. And yeah. so went from geology into sales now. So pretty big change, but that's huge. Yeah, bro. I'm excited though. It'll be cool. Yeah, that will be cool. Are you... Why sales? What, what were you just tired of geology? Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. No, and it was cool. I mean, <laughs> I really did enjoy the the geology aspect. I mean, it's something that I've always enjoyed, like studying it through school and all yeah. that. So it was cool getting to apply that and see that stuff. But realistically, I mean, it got to the point where I would be going to the field and doing this stuff. And I'm like, I can't do this for the next 30 years. It's right. like, I was down there in a cave literally swinging a sledgehammer or something at like an awkward angle. And my body was just like beat up. I was like, oh, I got to, wow. yeah. Dude, you know what's crazy is that I bet you all those other people you worked with are kind of, I mean, this is kind of judgmental, but were they probably not the most fit guys and, and gals and they probably were either really skinny or kind of chubby. Yeah. And so we had one guy who was a little bit bigger. His name was Sherman. I loved him though. And, but I mean, no one seemed like they were that strong, but then mm-hmm. when you get in a hole and these people are, like, working their ass, can I say ass? Yeah, yeah, okay. say whatever you want, say okay. ass, but whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, they'd be just working super hard, and then, uh, so, I mean, they could always do everything and keep up with everything, but um, it was just funny because one of the dudes was, like, a little bit bigger, so yeah. anytime we'd go through these tight spaces, me and the head geologist would be able to fit through and then he'd have to like take another 30 <laughs> minutes to an hour, like wow. breaking out more stuff making oh it my bigger. Gosh. And yeah. That's so, wild, I mean, bro. We've got into some pretty tight spaces before. Nah, I couldn't do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even claustrophobic. I just don't like that. Oh dude. Worst one was, uh, we got into one cave and, uh, what was it called? Oh, boogie bundle. So okay. you go in this cave and you crawl down you get to like this end portion and it gets super, uh, really low. So it's probably about, I'd say, seven inches high, like eight inches high. Oh, my so gosh. Somewhere about, like, in there. And I'm crawling down and literally, like, breaking out rock bit by bit as I'm pushing forward. You get to the end point, and it's, like, in a whole bad air area. So you're, like, trying to breathe in, and everything you do is just wearing you out. So mm-hmm. I get to the end point of it, uh, and it was one of those things where my back was touching the ceiling of the cave. Mm. And, like, you breathe, and then your back hits it. So Oh, my god! Yeah, the only way to fit through was I had to, like, exhale all my air and then try to squeeze through. And I ended up getting through, but that was a pretty uh, pretty sketchy one. Well, what do they do if you can't get out? Nothing. Yeah, then you got to call cave rescue, and then it's, like, you're kind of screwed. But Oh, my gosh, bro. That's insane. Mm-hmm. I, I heard a story. This is a horrible story, but... This cave got this. I think it was just a cave diver. Like he didn't do it for research purposes. He just did it. Yeah. Um, and he freaking got stuck at an angle to where his feet were higher than his heart. Oh, dude, you're talking about uh, dang, what's the name of it? Yeah, it's a pretty famous one. Uh, Putty Cave something. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Nutty Putty Cave. Yep. And he, yeah. dude, oh my, that's so scary, bro. I know, dude. It happens all the time. I mean, like Jacob's Wells still has bodies in it. Oh my. Now, gosh. like in the underwater cavern part. Oh, they just gated it off now, but that's scary, dude. It's a wild, it's a pretty sketchy whenever you're actually doing it and you're like crawling around there and you see like some loose stuff or something that had fallen off the ceiling. It's like, all right, I'm going to crawl under this and let's hope (laughs) it doesn't fall down. I'm going to crawl under this. Yeah, that's horrible. That's cool that you got to apply that though. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool for the time being and I'm glad I got to do it. Saw a lot of cool stuff. But how long did you work there? Like a year or two? A year. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Was it like, um. Were the guys that you worked with, the guys and girls, were they kind of nerdy about the stuff? Um, yeah, definitely. The um, I worked with a guy. I really only worked with two people most of the time, just like in the field-wise, which was our head geologist and then uh, a contractor that we had that came on. But, um, yeah, the head geologist was just like a guy who he loves this. Like yeah. this is what he lives for is doing this caving That's stuff. Cool. And so it was cool getting to work with them and like yeah. him being so passionate about it. So it was cool getting to kind of see that. Yeah. It's always nice when somebody's passionate about what they do. Yeah. It makes it makes you 
feel a little bit better about what you're doing, even if you don't love it. Yeah, exactly. That's, so, that's, I mean, that's kind of how I feel at work right now. The, my boss is like, she's very, very passionate about mm-hmm. like, um, I work at the YMCA part time. Okay, I was about to ask, what do yeah, you do? Yeah, I work at the YMCA part time in Georgetown, and mm-hmm. there's no gym. It's like a, it's essentially like an office space. Oh, okay, yeah. really? Like a WeWork type deal? Um, no, probably a little bit bigger than that. Or oh, like, really? Well, no, 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 no. I'm trying to think. It's like a, um, it's like in a strip mall. It's like one of the buildings in a strip oh, mall. Okay, where you yeah. see like a dentist office, and then mm-hmm. like a Chuck E. Cheese next to it, something like mm-hmm. that. It's um. There's a, I think to our left, there's like a after school study thing for kids. Mm-hmm. And then to our right, there's like a mobility place for like older people where they go to get like walkers and stuff. Yeah. And then behind us is like, a, like some sort of animal clinic or vet or something like that. So we hear dogs barking all the time. But well, dude, anyways, my boss is super passionate about just like helping kids out. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty cool to see. Like it makes the job better even, oh 100 i still don't like you know not in love with the job but right i do t-shirts i make t-shirts in the back so very nice oh yeah, a made, little clean action i on made you. this one bro it's just got sparkles and dog fur on it wow that's nice yeah the dog fur really yeah. accents the sparkles it well. does didn't even see that shout out to jackson the dog <laughs> anyways so what are you um what are you excited about this new position like what's exciting about it um It'll just be nice to not be because I mean previously I was pretty much working in the field every day so mm-hmm. it started it's been hot oh, like yeah. I mean it's hot here and yeah. so uh, doing that and just getting out of the manual labor aspect and getting more into the business side of things somewhere mm. where I'm going to be in an office I have better benefits uh, I like talking to people so I think that this position is actually going to suit me pretty well so my last one I mean it's kind of hard to talk to people when you're yeah down in the 100%, cave but yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so I think it'll be cool. I think it's going to be a fun little gig and excited to see what's to come. Yeah, bro. It's not on Dirty Six, is it? Uh, no, it's over like West Six. It's at the, yeah, it's <laughs> Dirty Six. Um, you know where the Chase building is? Yeah. Yeah, it's like they have like four floors, four or five floors up there. Mm-hmm. Is that your foot I keep in? Yeah, it is. Oh, sorry, bro. Sorry. No, it's cute. I thought you were playing uh-huh. footsies. Dude, that's exciting. I'm excited for you, man. I know, um, first of all, being downtown Austin working is going to be pretty cool yeah i think it'll be sweet yeah the excitement of that like just being in the big city it's like you know austin's not the biggest but it's like a big city kind of vibe yeah and and having a job down there would be cool that's awesome man congratulations on that thank you thank you dude so you you are also part of the uh the whiskey morning coffee gang i am i am yeah we're repping all over baby (sighs) that's the good stuff dude it is the good stuff what are you what are you drinking right now which one this is texian army bun okay yeah yeah i have the um Evan gave me the big bag. Oh, the yeah. big, yeah, those are nice. So I got that little canister that keeps it air sealed, and then I just put, you know, fill it up with whichever one that oh, I yeah. want. So That's real it, nice. It's nice, man, and I've gotten that pour over you saw me doing. It's it's really cool. I'm trying to get it down to a science. I'm trying to perfect the, the brew. Dude, it's weird how much <clears throat> coffee stuff is, like, down to a science like that. Whenever you're watching videos and stuff, people are literally measuring every single thing that you're adding yeah, into it. It's, it's wild. Nuts. And right now the, the dilemma I'm having is – um. <laughs> it's so funny. <clears throat> I have an electric grinder, mm. so it doesn't Ooh, evenly. Yeah, it doesn't properly grind it. Yeah, it doesn't evenly grind yeah. the beans, and so they're all different sizes. And so I was like, kind of looking up some techniques to help with it. Uh-huh. And um, I was watching a video actually, like one of my buddies, Dylan. He was on the podcast. He's super into coffee. Mm. He sent me a video, and it was uh, James Hoffman. You know who that is? Super like coffee guy wears glasses has a Brit like an accent probably yeah. yeah you probably know him if you saw him and he was um talking about how to like help um your grinds if you have a, one of those electric grinders oh yeah and he was like first you grind it up right you click it click it click it you don't hold it down yeah exactly like little bursts of mm-hmm. it yeah and then you shake it to get the grounds kind of evenly distributed so that there's not any bigger ones mm-hmm. and then he said what you do next is you get a sifter like what you would put like you know how people put the powdered sugar yeah. on cakes mm-hmm. and it like f- like filters it through? You do that and you do that with the grounds over a paper towel. And then you get the ones that are big and they're still in the sifter. And you put it back in the grinder. You grind those back up. And then once you do that, you put all those grinds on a paper towel and you kind of evenly just distribute them around the paper towel. Uh-huh. And then you pour that paper towel into your coffee. 
And I'm like, yeah, that's a lot. I'm just, <laughs> Dude, I'm just going to get a different grinder. <laughs> exactly. It's so much. It's I like know. you could do this, 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 and this, and then it's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, It's dude, not going to be great. Oh, my gosh. It's wild, though. It's so good. You can really, like, obviously, if you're just now starting, you probably couldn't tell the difference. But whenever you kind of get used to a certain way you're making coffee Mm -hmm. and then you change it up a little bit you can definitely taste the difference in it like oh yeah i can always tell whenever the coffee's like too bitter Mm -hmm. and it doesn't absorb enough or whatever the case may be i don't know what causes what but i can definitely tell when the grinds aren't good and the coffee doesn't taste as good it's still good still really good coffee but yeah it's always good coffee when it's a whiskey morning (laughs) when it's a whiskey morning dude so what um how Let's talk about Whiskey Morning Coffee for a little bit. What, how did you guys get into that? I know that it was like a project for Evan, right, at mm-hmm. some point. And yeah. Then, and then what happened? So Evan had a class project at TCU. And, I mean, I'm sure he'll be on the pod at some point yeah. if he comes down and hits some right. of this stuff. But uh, he had a class project at TCU, and then he had to create a business. And so we were kind of hanging out. And uh, him and TJ, I mean, were already guides in Alaska. Mm-hmm. And we were hanging out talking about, like, well, I mean, what's something that we like that we can actually make into a business? Mm-hmm. And Evan was like, well, I mean, I got all these whiskey barrels here with the Sledge Distillery, so we could take those and we could try aging coffee in them because, I mean, we drink coffee every day. We like to drink whiskey. So might as well try them. We mix them together and then finally just kept, like, tweaking the little little bits and pieces until we had a solid recipe that mm-hmm. we could keep recreating. That's awesome. And so, I mean, yeah, from there it just kind of started going. I mean, we – after he finished the project, uh, all his classmates were gone because they were originally in the business as well. Mm-hmm. Once that finished, they were all gone, and then it was just kind of left up to us. And so uh, then we just kept going, coming out with more products, and then just kind of trying to expand a little bit more. And so I've actually taken a step down some, probably since December. Um, I just didn't have the time to be doing yeah. the stuff that they're doing. I mean, they're full-time right now. They're mm-hmm. working coffee booths, little trade shows, stuff like that. So I don't have the time. I stepped down a little bit, still a uh, part owner of it, but sold some of my shares. And, um, but yeah, dude, it's, it was absolutely a blast getting to do that. And like actually creating a business was something that was just, it's like, it's really cool to see it kind of go through its fruition. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. you start with something that's small and then by the end of it, it's like, okay, I mean, we're actually supplying some people now. People seem to like the coffee. Yeah. And so yeah, I was but I was gonna say I was thinking about that today, and I was like, man, I'm drinking their coffee. I have it like displayed. I have a T-shirt with your guys' logo on it, and one of those like "Don't Austin My Texas" shirts. Mm-hmm, yeah, I can't wear that here though. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's a cool shirt. It's a nice material. Uh, but um, I was thinking about. It, I was like, how cool is that to just to have people rep your brand, like have it like displayed on whether it's at the square in Grand Marie or somewhere in Fort Worth or wherever it is. Cause it's in a lot of places now. It's like, yeah, it's super cool. And I mean like going to uh, little coffee shops, there's one out in Alito that's just mm-hmm. fire, but uh, going to the shops and then seeing like that they're using your coffee for that's the coffee so cool. that they're giving everyone. It's like, dang, that's, that's pretty cool. Feeling, that's awesome, but, man. But yeah, I mean, dude, the team's, the team's solid. Like they're all just working their ass off mm-hmm. and that's definitely gonna, gonna be pretty successful. I'd imagine. So uh, I don't think they've announced it yet, but there's uh, some more exciting stuff on the way regarding yeah. like, new blends and stuff like that. So right. That's awesome. Cool yeah, I, stuff I saw their um, their post on Instagram. It said more to come or some, yeah. some shit like that. Yeah, so there will be some some cool stuff. But, dude, that white buffalo, I don't know if you drink espresso very much. I, I haven't made it yet. I haven't made it yet. Um, that one's fire. Yeah. Yeah, that one's really good. Do you drink it still? Yeah, I do. I still drink it. I need to get some more from them. I haven't been drinking as much coffee because I just – destroy my body with pre-workout in the morning so oh, I'm like, yeah ah, i don't really want to do more caffeine that's but. true dang bro um what's what's are you like not affiliated at all with whiskey morning coffee or like you don't help out at all or you i'm just basically i'm not helping out at all i'm still a part owner in it mm-hmm. but yeah i'm not doing anything regarding it right now is that something you plan on returning to um i mean if i ever got the time where i could come back or if it's something where uh, I would be able to go back there and work full time and mm-hmm. be satisfied with like pay wise and all that kind of stuff. Then yeah, for sure. Like I would love to do that, but, or even doing it a uh, part time, but yeah, I mean, we'll see, we'll see what happens with it. Yeah. You're a big part of it in my mind. Uh, every time I think of whiskey morning coffee, I think of you and Evan. Sweetheart. I'm serious, bro. That's like you get, you're the dudes. Um, also 
I just, there's something about that freedom of having like your own thing mm-hmm. that, oh, yeah. that like, and I'm sure you've experienced that to the fullest and dude, I don't know. I, I just, my two cents is if you can get back in, get back in or try to at least, you know, Oh no, a hundred percent. Because mm-hmm. I mean, that is true. Like, I mean, everyone wants to own their own business and mm-hmm. be their own boss and that kind of stuff. So yeah. it's definitely something that I would look into again for yeah. sure. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's really good coffee. That's, oh, this isn't even yeah. an ad right now. No, I'll do I know, that dude. later. <laughs> Sponsored by Whiskey Morning Coffee, <laughs> dude. For real, it's kind of wild. No, it's uh, it's solid though. I really do like it, and I think a lot of other people like it too. So yeah. it's it's playing out pretty well. It's really cool. I know the the group back home, the guys that you guys started the whole thing with. Mm-hmm. It's just the group of guys that are in charge of Whiskey Morning Coffee are are un matched like you can't you, there's no way you can find a group like that anywhere else no i agree i mean everyone has their own skills and yeah. everyone excels at their skills too and i mean evan himself you've seen him go through and literally since he was 13 14 years old he's been starting businesses like, yeah oh yeah i've worked with him on a landscaping crew when we I were like that. 14 mm-hmm. mowing uh neighborhoods and stuff like that so it's like 14 year olds with neighborhood contracts so it's pretty wild stuff yeah but He's always been a really business minded person. I think it's gonna gonna work out pretty yeah. well. Yeah, heck yeah, bro. I love those guys, all of them. Like, oh yeah. I was there a couple weeks ago. Whenever I got like, I got like the package and stuff, and um, it was just a good time. Evan yeah. handed me this bottle of uh, what he, what was it called? Whiskey water. Oh, the whiskey water. Yeah, yeah. I haven't tried it yet. I need. It's to. pretty good, dude. Really? It's pretty dang good. Yeah, especially when it's when it's cold. Yeah. It's like he just handed me the bottle. He's like, hey, Via, check this out. And he just, it was open. He's like, all right, drink it. And it's like, all right. There you <laughs> go. Drink it. And we were chilling around. The, the facility over there is awesome, too. Oh, dude, the facility is so nice. And I mean, that's somewhere we've all, like, all being good friends with Evan, like, we've all kind of grown up there since we yeah. were young and, like, going out there constantly. So it's crazy to see uh, where we knew it when it was, like, when we mm. were 12 years old, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then to where it is now, it's like, it's just, it's totally different. Yeah. But it's it's a super cool vibe out there. I love it. Dude, it is. And it's one of those places where you like, for me personally, I wish I could go out there more. We're just yeah. so far away. It's mm-hmm. like, not. Dude, yeah, it's like impossible. Mm-hmm. Even being in Fort Worth, I mean, where I was living in Fort Worth previously, like it was still take me an hour to get there, like yeah. 50 minutes, 45, something like that. Yeah. Cool place though, man. Hope you get back in that. But, mm-hmm. um, so, Josh, what's, let's talk about um, the elephant in the room, okay? Hit me with it. Dude, what the hell are you freaking eating, dude? Ah, the you knew, muscles, Yeah, dog. you knew that was coming? Oh, I, I had a feeling. I had a <laughs> feeling. No, um, really just eating a lot. Like, eating a lot, trying to keep a healthy diet. Uh, been getting after it, though, on the workouts. Like, yeah. Really, since, I mean, for all throughout college, I was working out quite a bit, but... Uh, I really started hitting it hard once I moved to Austin. Mm-hmm. Then I started taking it a lot more serious, like eating healthier, doing all that. So that's definitely helped a lot. But I mean, yeah, been working out with Ryan too and hitting some workouts with him. I know he needs to hit it as, as hard as you have, man. <laughs> Come on, Rhino, step it up. dude. Yeah, I know. I know. No, he, uh, I feel bad. I've actually been the one bailing on him the last couple <laughs> mornings because I've been so lazy being off work. But yeah, dude, it's been fun. We've been uh, getting after it. They're awesome. trying to get a workout in. What are you like? What is your workout routine currently? Is it is it what is it? Just standard bodybuilding type stuff, like Arnold stuff? Yeah, I do um, bodybuilding type stuff. So I've made all my own workouts like throughout the years. I've just kind of mm-hmm. played with it, made the things that I've seen that have worked. Uh, so I'll do like a let's see, I would do legs, chest, back, shoulders, buys, legs, and then that's my workouts for the week. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I'd switch like leg two leg days a week with two chest days a week and do one day of legs. But yeah, so I'll do like a five day deal or yeah, five day, five muscle groups. So that's awesome, bro. That's how I've been doing it and just been hitting a lot of reps, a lot of exercises. Yeah. You're pretty large, bro. I remember, I remember, is that a whoop strap? You got a whoop strap? Of course, baby. Okay. Okay. Dude, they're, they're super cool. Have you looked at them? I'm not on the whoop game yet, but I know a lot about them just from like podcast ads and i've looked it up on the website and stuff i'm a big yeah the podcast ads are insane they're Mm -hmm. everywhere um i'm a big fan though dude that's it's weird when you start actually like monitoring your sleep and stuff like that because originally i was thinking i was going to bed at like midnight waking up at five and i was like Mm -hmm. i feel fine i was like i feel okay and then i started tracking it with this and i was like 
your sleep is shit. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. So, I mean, it doesn't like necessarily make you, but it makes you more conscious of your sleep habits where yeah. you can actually kind of like go out and fix them. So now mm-hmm. I'm getting a lot better sleep, recovering better. And I think it's helping a lot. In, That's like, dope. Working yeah. Out. What time do you normally go to bed and wake up? Um, when I was working at my last job, sound makes me sound old, but, uh, <laughs> like probably getting in bed around eight, 15 mm-hmm. asleep by like nine and then up at five four forty five. yeah why is that uh i mean i would just go because i was working out before i'd go to work so i'd wake up make my breakfast let the dogs out uh and then hit the gym be there like five forty five, six o'clock and then work out till about eight and then go to work and then w- basically work out for another eight at nine hours dang do you think that helped your I think uh, like I think my last job definitely helped um, helped me cut weight for sure mm. because I mean I was I was sweating like a dog like, oh I bet like a dog dogs don't <laughs> even sweat but uh, sweating like crazy working out there in the sun especially once it got hot it was just insane but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna have to try to start keeping like more active now that I'm gonna be sitting down a lot so trying yeah, to that's true incorporate some running stuff like that but dang bro do you not do any cardio right now no. No. Really? No cardio? No cardio. You just eat pretty good? Yeah, I, I eat pretty good and uh, try not to. I've been on a little drink and benders the last couple of weekends, <laughs> but usually try not to uh, drink a whole lot, at least yeah. not a lot of high calorie stuff like beers. Right. And But that's the that's the uh, way I've been doing it. That's crazy, bro. Dude, so how long have you been in it? Because you're looking a little large yourself. Thanks, bro. I've been in it for quite a, like since college yeah. is really when I hit it hard. Mm-hmm. Um never like as hard as you obviously because if i would have i would be different i'd look different you know <laughs> what i'm saying be different. i'd be different you just built different bro that's what they say that's what they that's say. what they've been saying <laughs> yeah dude you just built different um i think college is when i started hitting it like harder than i in high school was whatever i didn't really work out yeah same except for sports right mm-hmm. and then college i started really trying to watch what i eat and hit the gym at least every day yeah and then uh, I got to a point in college where I was pretty big and pretty like pretty lean. And then, dude, I just I just eat so much food. It's I'm like a freaking vacuum. I don't <laughs> I cannot stop, especially when it's like um. I mean, I'm at the house. It's cool, right? Uh-huh. I'm fine. I can stop. I'll have a little bit of snacks, but like I'm cool. Whenever I'm like a bad weekend when there's pizza around or some sort of bad food, uh-huh. I'll have one bite and then I'll get like the shark eyes and then I'm like it's on. I'm not stopping until I throw up. I've never thrown up, but I've I've I eat a tremendous amount of food. It's like the cookie monster. Yes, dude. Yeah. No, dude, I'm I'm the exact not to cut you off. No, but you. I'm the same way, dude. I've literally this last probably like three weeks, I'd say. Um there's no telling how many Chick-fil-A cookies that I've bought and oh, eaten. I buy dang. them by the six pack and dude, it got <laughs> to a point where wow. I literally was buying them like every three days, four oh, days, geez. and was just eating them while I was like these are 400 calories each. Oh, like my I can't gosh. Do, I can't keep doing this. They're so good, though. They are. They're they're worth it. Yeah. Do you have a... So whenever you say you eat clean, what does that mean? Like, I know there's... So there's this guy on, on YouTube. He's a YouTuber. His name is Remington James. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of him? No, I haven't. So he basically makes, like, anabolic meals. So he'll make it, like, high protein, mm-hmm. lower calories. Yeah. Um, And he'll make, like, pizzas. He'll make burgers. He'll make anything, really, that you would eat anywhere else just Mm -hmm. higher protein lower calories um is that something you incorporate you eat stuff like that or do you are you trying to stick to the chicken and the rice and the i mean yeah chicken rice salmon vegetables that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff but i do like to do that with like um stuff like pastas things like that so anything that i can use a healthier alternative like uh chickpeas or vegetable pasta type stuff but Mm. usually we'll use chickpeas so it is a lower calorie lower carb higher protein Mm. type of pasta so any sort of thing that we do with that but yeah lots of tacos just ground beef lean turkey all that stuff yeah that's kind of what we do here we do like can i hit this yeah bro you make the fire alarm go off now there's not even one in here it's probably a health hazard I'm going to sue. Yeah, you should get a little bit of money. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's awesome, though. I'd love to see that. And obviously, you've been in it for a while, and you're freaking jacked right now. I hate to say it, but you are. Um, dude, that's crazy, bro. I remember you in high school. We weren't, like, we didn't know each other that well in high school. Mm-hmm. And you were, like, a skinny guy. You were known for being, like, really fast. 
is what I remember. Ooh, I appreciate that. And then, uh, dude, I mean, I didn't say it. I just, that's what I heard. But, um, and then I saw you a couple times, like senior year, after high school, whatever. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, the next time I saw you, you were just jacked. And I was like, bro, what are you doing, dude? Dude, I honestly, I mean, I, I do, I work out. Okay, hold on. I, sorry. Here's a picture from freshman year of college or sophomore year. That's not even you. Yeah, that's me. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so, I mean, once I started hitting it, I started going at it pretty hard, even in college, even though I was just drinking a lot more, so mm-hmm. I, wasn't, I wasn't as defined. I was just, like, right. getting stronger, getting bigger, but still not super cut. Right. But, yeah, dude, I mean, uh, I'm also blessed with pretty good genetics, I feel like, because mm-hmm. my dad was always big into bodybuilding, that kind of stuff. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Do you have any goals with it? Are you like trying to, are you eventually going to try a show? Dude, that's funny you asked because I literally was just talking to a guy in the gym the other day and was, I've never thought about it, but uh, I would like to compete in one and just like try it out and see because I feel like it'd be fun to yeah, like try not? it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here now. I might as well. Exactly. Do it. And you always see like, if you follow any sort of bodybuilder on Instagram or social media or whatever the case may be, it always looks like it's super hard to cut weight. Oh, dude, and it's like, the cutting process is brutal. Mm-hmm. Like, it's and it nuts. just, it's one of those challenges that I'm like, oh, I don't know why I would, anybody would want that, but I might want to try that one of these days. It's, it's exactly. like, and you're never going to go as hard as you, you could until you're in like a competition like that, I feel. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause I mean, until you're like actually, which I do set goals, but if, when you have something that like you're actually working towards yeah. like that. Because, I mean, even the thing, like, with what you did, your little uh, marathon deal yeah. was, like, that's wild. That was dumb. <laughs> it was cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm trying to... Do you know who Nick Bear is? I'm throwing out all these names, but they're like... Do you know who Nick Bear is? YouTube guy or what? He's... um Yeah, kind of, I think. But he um he owns a supplement company in Round Rock. It's oh, called okay. Bear Performance Nutrition, BPN. Okay. And um, it's really cool. I used to live, like, literally, I think, 11 minutes from his facility where he makes all the protein and all that stuff mm-hmm. but he's got a really cool he calls himself the hybrid athlete mm-hmm. and that's because he does like triathlons he does marathons he does like all these endurance events yeah but i think prior to those he um he was in the military and so he would always run in the military and then i guess when he got out of the military he kind of started bodybuilding um and then he got huge and then he never like lost a lot of his muscle mm-hmm. so he's always been like jacked and he runs still. And so he calls himself the hybrid athlete because he's he does bodybuilding workouts and running. Yeah. He's like the only guy I've ever seen that does that stuff. It is weird because, I mean, um, there's another dude. I can't think of his name. But it was the same type deal. Like, mm-hmm. he was a – I want to say he was a Navy SEAL. He was a Navy SEAL, and then now he just does all these, like, huge endurance things, which it sounds wild with – I mean, considering that I don't run, but mm. I think it'd be cool to at least once in your lifetime, like do something like that, where it's just like you're pushing yourself to the yeah. absolute limit. You're talking about David Goggins? No, not David Goggins. Uh, hold on. I'll find him. Yeah, that's it's insane. Uh, so during that marathon training, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to tell you. Um, we got like to the point, I say we, it was me, Daniel, and our other buddy, Adrian. Mm. Adrian had been running them for you know since high school yeah and so he's done like six or seven marathons which is pretty wild that's insane yeah and and like when we started this is like we hadn't been running we hadn't been doing it we were running like a mile one point like four or five mm-hmm. every day and it's like he was like well why don't you just guys run one and a half and we were like oh that's a good point we're almost there <laughs> that's fair i guess yeah and then he brought it up to two we brought it up to three and then four and then five and then we just decided to sign up for the marathon since it was like, which is like thinking back, it's really dumb that we decided this because the gyms got shut down because of COVID. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, well, why don't we try a marathon in December? <laughs> yeah. And COVID was still a thing. It's yeah. like, why would, why would that be okay and still going on? Yeah. But it, dude, honestly, I got robbed. I didn't, we, nobody was able to do it because they obviously they postponed due to COVID and it's, yeah. it's this year now, but they don't refund you your money. And so it's like you either have to do the next one or you you just lose your money. And so I so signed it's like up. You're gonna run. I signed up for it, and uh, I'm trying to run. I'm trying to like get back into the running routine, but it's it's hard when you don't have people like to run with you. And yeah, hold dude, you accountable. Support, support systems are key for <coughs> sure. Yeah, I think the most that I ever ran was 
20 miles. Oh my god. Pretty cool to say, but like That is cool though. It's it was so hard, bro. I'm it, sure that's it's, 20 it's, miles. How long did that take you? Mm, it took me like like 2 hours or something like that. Yeah. Well, maybe longer. But just that's, think about running for 2 hours. It's dumb. <laughs> yeah. No stopping there. It's um I have it right here. It's actually this Garmin watch was actually pretty nice during it. Uh, if I don't think if I wouldn't have gotten this, I think I eventually would have gotten a whoop strap. But yeah. for now, this I'm going to keep this until that break. Because that doesn't tell the time, does it, on there? No, this doesn't tell time. It's yeah. literally just like a glorified heartbeat monitor. Yeah. Those are really intense, though. I like the I like the idea of it, too. Mm-hmm. I'll show you some stuff on the app. It's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. I'll show you this later, too. I, I can't pull it up right now. But, yeah, bro, 20 miles took, like, over two hours. Um you get to a certain point when you're running, like obviously everybody has a goal. Mm. I'm going to try to keep this pace up for X amount of time. Yeah. And when you, when you hear, when you're like not a runner, I'm not a runner and I kind of have a basic understanding of it now, but like, you know, you hear people running marathons at like a five minute per mile pace. That's, and it's, it's so crazy. You're like, how is that even possible? But like when you, when you, it's like muscle memory, essentially, like you get Mm -hmm. used to running that pace. And even during the race, you have adrenaline and so it kind of carries you a little bit um and so our goal like was always like a nine minute like mile that's still a solid pace yeah Yeah, for for over the course of you know 12 13 14 and up it's it gets pretty tough and then of course you don't always keep that when you're not like an experienced runner and when you're like when it's your first 20 mile run Mm -hmm. it's hard to keep that you know yeah so the pace ended up getting to like 11 11 minutes (laughs) <laughs> which is like a slow trot but like that's still dude i mean when you're pushing that many miles like that's a lot dude it's wild and i got to the point to where like i wasn't even like breathing hard it was just my body was just like sh- like step after step <laughs> it was just like oh when is this over yeah but it is cool it is a huge mental challenge that um even like i think even eight miles which still is a lot of miles but in comparison to a marathon it's not that much it's like yeah even that eight mile marker you're like really trying to find yourself and find that grit and that dude that's the that's mm. the key that's one there's actually a quote i love what is it um is it dr seuss yeah it's a dr seuss quote um <laughs> no but it's uh oh the quote okay the quote was uh a test of mind over flesh will do you good yeah. so i think that that's a pretty cool one mm-hmm. just because it's like you're you're having to actually like be gritty and have to know that your body's like done mm-hmm. but you just got to keep pushing on like that so yeah it's intense man and I, I couldn't imagine doing i mean a marathon i didn't get to a marathon no, just wait yeah just wait till this year I just wait till december <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be walking that thing <laughs> it's funny because they put time limits on there because really you have to yeah i think the marathon is like six or eight hours or something like that and okay. then the half marathon is like four hours so but it's it's intense bro and it's it's really cool because then you start to get in your flow you start to figure it out Mm -hmm. and and you it takes like three two three miles four miles sometimes to warm your body up and then once you push through those first three or four miles Mm -hmm. everything after that like you're good you're like whoa like what just happened my body's like okay now yeah yeah keep going i was just gonna say and then it's like you hit another wall later on down the road but it's like for a couple of miles you're like solid it's yeah. wild. That's like how uh, Lexi and I would always run, do mm-hmm. like a uh, trail running out in Nacogdoches because they had some pretty cool trails. So yeah. we take our dog River with us and we just go run trails. But it was like, a, I think it was around a six and a half mile Dang. Uh, back and forth. So, but that's the same thing like you're talking about. Like I'd have my headphones in and like you're warming up and it's like, this sucks ass. Yes. And then it's like you get to a certain point where it's like, okay, I've done a mile now. The music's going, blood's pumping. It's like, all right, I feel good. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's a really cool experience. And I, I honestly, I just would eat so much afterwards. You just, you're like a bottomless pit whenever you're, you get done running those. Tr- yeah. Uh, uh, like greater than five miles. You just like a bottomless pit. And yeah. You just consume food. You just throwing it back and just shoveling it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. And if I think if I would have tailored my nutrition better, which I didn't do horrible, but I obviously, I obviously didn't do the best because it's still like, and, and it still affected the running a little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. But if I would have tailored that off better, it would have been obviously just a better experience overall. Yeah. And on top of that, I wasn't working out, like no weights, like at all. Mm-hmm. So literally just running and then I'm going home and that's it. Like 
it was so that I think that part is kind of where my mental kind of like kind of broke almost. Yeah. It's like, uh, dude, I, I want to lift weights. I don't look the way I want to look. Mm-hmm. And although I can run eight miles at like a nine minute pace, I don't care. I, I want to look <laughs> like, yeah. I want to look fit. I want to look lean. Yeah. And I didn't look like either of those. I lost a lot of muscle mass. Dude, that's the only thing that's, <laughs> I mean, not that it's bad to do that. Like cardio is great for you. And I do mm-hmm. certain forms of cardio with like hit exercises, but, uh, that's the thing that I don't like is like when you're doing these long distance runs like that, which I do like to do occasionally, but it's like, uh, once you stop burning fat, it's like you're burning muscle. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's kind of a shitty deal. It's like you're working out to get something and then it's like, all right, I'm going to go run and burn off a little bit of that. now. Exactly. That's the thing with like this, this hybrid athlete thing. I kind of feel like it's almost, it's almost not like a chicken or the egg. It's, it's definitely like, one is first you know what yeah. i mean like if you want to contain and maintain that muscle mass you have to get it first before yeah you, you get before, it mm-hmm. you get it and then i feel like it's just finding a good balance of yeah like, okay this is how much i can be running here without, exactly yeah and in this program that i'm doing right now it's like the first week is like two miles second week is like three miles Ooh. and then it goes up to four five six and then it gets eventually into like eight nine ten Mm, it's pretty wild that's gonna be tough yeah it's hard to do because it's also so much time like yeah it's weird it's a weird balance because obviously this nick bear guy does it for a living so he's able to like although he doesn't do it during his work hours he'll run in the morning and then after work around five or six he'll lift right it gives him plenty of time to recover gives him time to eat whatever Mm. he needs to do hydrate so that he can have plenty of uh, performance for his workout yeah but like when you're a normal human and like you're trying to start a business after work or you're trying to like have like a podcast after work, if you don't do both in the morning yeah, or then you don't have time. Yeah. It's just, it's so hard. Cause like when you get home at like, I work 30 minutes away now, which is far. I'm trying to reduce that, but you, it takes you 30 minutes plus traffic. So you add like 10, 15 minutes to get home. Mm-hmm. You're not getting home till like almost seven. And then you still got to work out, eat, and then have time to work on your small business or whatever you're trying to grow. It's like, it's really not feasible yeah. to, to maintain all that working out. But yeah. And that's, I mean, that's kind of where it was with like, uh, the coffee stuff is like, I literally just didn't have time to yeah. do stuff because mm-hmm. it was like, I would, I would go to work. I wouldn't get home till six and then I'm making dinner and I was up early in the day working out. So it's like, I, you, dude, you really just don't have time to do it all in a day. It's yeah. hard. Yeah, it's hard. especially when you don't time manage well. I, I'm getting better at it, but it's like I find myself scrolling on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And it's just so annoying. I'll literally like be mid scroll. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? And then I'll put my phone down and then I'll like I find myself wanting to go back like because you're like addicted Dude, to their addictions. It's, it's crazy. So, it's no, so it's bad. Cool. Like I'll be on Instagram scrolling. It's like, all right, close out, go to Facebook. It's like, all right, what's here? All right, back to Instagram. Yeah, now. it's like. This is just a bad habit. Yeah, it's a very bad habit. And yeah. it's it's something that's very, it's really, I'll say if you give it about a week, because I've done this before, you give it about a week where you either limit your time very strictly or you remove it. Mm-hmm. After that week, you're like, oh, I'm good. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, like, whatever. And then something always sparks it back to where you're like, oh, like, oh, Instagram. And then you start that routine again. It's really easy to snap into that habit of checking your phone. Mm-hmm. It takes a little bit longer to snap out of it. But once you're out, you're like, you're good. And see, dude, that's addictions with everything, though. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, these things, like, I can, if I slow down or I set it, uh, like, throw them all away, mm-hmm. and I last for a uh, week, two weeks, three weeks, something like that, and it's like, oh, dude, like, I'm good. And then you go out drinking, and it's like, mm-hmm. I see one, I'm like, uh, I'll take one hit. It's like <laughs> just one hit. And then the next day I'm like, all right, I'm going to the gas station. I'm buying more of this shit. <laughs> what even is that, bro? Uh, it's a views little nicotine device. That's crazy. Is it? So I've never used one of those. Don't. Is it? I, I don't think I could. My lungs aren't strong enough, dude. I've, I think I've tried to take a hit off of one. Yeah. Even the vapes without nicotine, I would try to take hits off of tear my lungs up dude see that's good that's good it's a good deterrent yeah i can't i can't do it but what what's the addiction to is it like the habit of just blowing something or do you get like an actual i mean nicotine you do get the you get like the little head high so it's like 
if you haven't hit it in a while or you're dehydrated and you hit it, it's like you hit it and your head's just kind of <laughs> like, I'd be out at work and like just didn't drink water. I'm like, I'm going to rip this thing, <laughs> hit it and like almost fall down. But that's no. hilarious. So that's like the addicting part. And I mean, the habit of like, you're doing this constantly, just like holding it and then hitting it, blowing it out. So mm-hmm. same thing with snuff. And I mean, I quit snuff uh, like when I was in college, senior mm-hmm. year or something. Uh, but it was the same thing. I mean, like, you're into the habit of, like, packing the can, putting it in your lip, and spitting. Yeah. And so then the way I had to quit that was, like, just uh, – I was dipping coffee grounds, actually. Wow. Yeah. Did that help? Yeah. I, I mean, there's a company called Grinds, and uh, they would just have little pouches of coffee grounds in it. And so literally I'd just stick, like, three of those in it. At least gives you, like, the action of doing what you're used to doing, so – that's actually a really smart company. Oh, yeah. There's like, quite a few now that do it, and it's smart. I mean, That's awesome. that wasn't around before. so. That's really cool, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so hit me with what's the plan? What's the plan for your business? What's the plan with the, with all the podcasting stuff? Where are you going with it? Um, so I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm torn because I'm not really torn. I know I want to keep doing this. This, yeah. is, this is what I would love to continue to do. Mm-hmm. And if it brings in revenue or income. I'd love it. Oh, you know? yeah. I think the moment you try to get that stuff, um, the moment you actually are like, wh- whenever I sit down in this chair and I have a guest and I'm thinking of what to say in order to like, to get somebody to want to sponsor me, mm-hmm. the moment that starts happening is when you're, it goes downhill. So I'm trying to keep it. It's really not hard for me. I don't like, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to social media. But, like, mm. it's, like, meaningless. I don't really care much about it. It's hard for me to post. I'm not good at posting, even for the podcast, even for myself. Yeah. So, like, having – my brain is easily able to shut that off. Like, I don't look at the numbers of this thing rarely, right? Sometimes you have to just, like, to know kind mm. of your benchmarks. But I would love to keep doing this and eventually have people, like, hit me up and be like, hey, man, we, like, really enjoyed what we heard. Mm-hmm. Um would you mind throwing an ad out for us? Like that's the goal eventually to get enough of those sponsorships to sustain this, right. Yeah. To where I can get like a better setup. Like it would be cool to rent like an office space out and totally deck it out so yeah. that it wouldn't be like, this is the spare bedroom in my house, but it it's, it looks cool. I no, like I it. mean, it's a sweet, it's a cool setup. I mean, I yeah, really thanks, like bro. it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it as cool as I can, but like the goal is just to keep doing it, bro. I mm-hmm. love, I love talking to people. I love, hearing people's stories. Like I had no idea what you did as a geologist and now I do. Yeah. Um, and the people I've had on here are really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, some of them I know, some of them I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I had a comedian on. Oh yeah. From, um, what was that? What's the company deal or, or um, I thought he worked or he did something. He, he did he shows did with, with, uh, it's like the company name that's in Austin. It's like a comedian deal. Mm. No, no, you're probably right. I just don't remember. Um, his name is all um, things. Com- no, it's not all things. Big com- laugh comedy. Big laugh comedy. I yeah, think that's it. he yeah. didn't do. He didn't do stuff with them. Oh, okay. honestly, I don't think it was the podcast that did it, but he definitely didn't do stuff with them before the podcast. That's all I'm saying. Ooh. But I know, I know, Brandon. Ooh. Brandon's the CEO of that place. I did oh, work okay. for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, bro. I didn't know him at all. We had a really awesome conversation. We actually both know Zach Wall. I don't know if you heard that one, but. He knows Zach Wall. That's so random. Yeah. yeah. How does he know him? Um, hunting. He oh, took him yeah. hunting. Yeah. He like he rented the guide service and and took him hunting. Yeah. So, it's pretty cool. Random. So random. I was I was like in shock. I was like, how the hell do you know Zach Wall? What the heck? And I called Zach. I was like, hey, bro, we mentioned you on the podcast. Is that cool? And he was like, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Dude, it is. It's random how uh, little things like that, like just how small the world <laughs> actually is and yeah. stuff. It's just weird. Yeah, because that dude is from, like, this area, I'm pretty sure. Like, mm-hmm. And then he just happened to go up to Granbury or up north. And and just randomly met up with Zach Wall and randomly did a had him trip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so wild. But his story is pretty cool, too. Like, he just he said that he just grinded it out as a comedian and would drive from Georgetown to Austin immediately after work and taking a nap in his truck before, like, the comedy clubs open mm-hmm. and then go do open mics and then just sometimes... Because he lived in Florence, which is a little bit further north, I think, than Georgetown. Mm-hmm. So he would drive down to Austin, sleep in his truck, wake up, do his comedy stuff, and then drive back home and then do it all over again. So he was probably driving two-plus hours a day. 
Dang, every that's single an, day. That's intense. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. And then he said that um, some days, I think he was a lineman for the city of Georgetown or something like that. Okay, so, yeah. So he would sleep. Sometimes he would go down to Austin and he would get back really late. And he's like, I don't want to go home. So he would just sleep in his truck in the truck yard, wake up and just already be at work. So then he just showed up like all he had to do was wake up he's already there <laughs> that's impressive yeah pretty nuts bro yeah but it, it takes a certain kind of person to do that i feel like um that's admirable mm-hmm. because it means he really like enjoyed it you yeah. know but i feel like there's more than one way to skin a cat you know yeah you don't have to sleep in your truck to but that's freaking cool that he did it that shows that he's truly like in love with comedy yeah and he's doing really well now he's a full-time comedian which is insane. It kind of almost sounds funny to say that, like a full-time comedian. But yeah. he's making a living, doesn't do anything else but tell jokes. That's sweet, That's yeah. freaking badass, bro. That's super cool. Yeah, bro. Um, so what is like, what has your experience been like in Austin so far? I know you've been here for a little over a year. Yeah. Um, year and a half. Yeah, uh, it's been about a year, close to a year. So mm-hmm. moved here uh, very beginning of, or no, very end of September, I guess, or beginning of October, I can't remember. Uh, moved here then, started working, and initially it was a little bit weird, just, I mean, mm. going from DFW where I knew I had all my friends, I had a giant group of people where I'd always be hanging out with people, and then yeah. coming here and it was like, okay, I know, like, maybe a handful of people, which I was always seeing Ryan working out with him, and it was mm. great talking with him and all that kind of stuff, but it was still weird adjusting to the fact that it's like, okay, you've left behind now your family's back in dfw the majority of all your friends are back in dfw and so uh initially probably the first three four months it was a little weird just adjusting to that and like being like okay i'm literally just working working out uh cooking sleeping and then repeating yeah oh yeah so i mean that got really weird but um even lately i mean we've been we've been doing this thing like after we were like okay we can't keep doing this like this so we started doing a deal where we would just go and try a new place every week. And I mean, we've met a ton of new people out here and we've been hanging out with them quite a bit. So since I've been doing all that and like being more active, going out, doing stuff, eating at different places, like dude, best city ever. Yeah, bro. Oh, it's so much fun. I mean, I've, I've never been in Austin or I haven't been in Austin yet. Like in terms of living, Mm -hmm. I've been in Georgetown. Yeah. Which is about, I mean, similar. yeah, Yeah, it is similar, but we were like, it's almost not as, you don't have as much inclination to go out in Georgetown just because it's it's very similar to Granbury. Really? Yeah, because yeah, Georgetown is. I mean, it's about an hour away from yeah. Austin. So, yeah, you probably didn't come out there too much. Yeah, it's like um, it's like with traffic, it's probably close to an hour. Without traffic, mm-hmm. it's probably like 45 minutes. Yeah, you know, that's it's, where I was working was in Georgetown area a lot. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, and you never came by the podcast, huh? <laughs> Dang, bro. Dude, it I was a long it. day of work, long day of work. <laughs> I get it, I get it. I'm not worried, but... Um, I'm honestly glad you came now because the setup is better and the audio is going to be better and the microphone is, I mean, the lights are better and all this yeah, shit. It's all this, it's all fancy. It's all, it's very fancy and it's going to get fancier. Dude, Love I want to have, a, I want to have a light from the ceiling looking like, I want to put one in the ceiling mm-hmm. and then, um, I have these two, but who knows? This isn't my place. I don't own this. So yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I don't know if I could drill through the ho- the roof, but anyways, bro, um, it just, I wasn't as inclined to go out in Georgetown. Yeah. And I wish you would have saw our house. It was huge. We lived in a big, like, two-story, four-bedroom house. Yeah. It was really nice. Um, randomly really cheap, too. And we were like, oh, this is nice here. We'll just chill in mm-hmm. indoors. But the whole point of me moving to Austin, <clears throat> me and me and the lady, was to, to get out, to experience Austin. Because yeah. I don't want to leave not having experienced it. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot to do in Austin. Like. Oh. Like, dude, it's endless. There's yeah. literally, there's so much different stuff to do, like hiking wise, uh, just outdoor stuff. And then the food is like mm-hmm. unreal. Yeah. And I was going to ask you like, what, like, where have you been going and what's good? What's not good? Like, I, I want to experience that stuff. Um, So there's a lot of places. I mean, it's always fun going, uh, going out like 6th Street, West 6th is really fun. Dirty mm-hmm. 6th can be fun if you're in yeah. the mood for it. Uh, Rainy Street. Uh, we go to Anthem a lot on Rainy Street. That's a pretty fire restaurant. So we'll okay. usually like eat there and then maybe go out a little bit after that. But uh, Cosmic Coffee, uh, it's over. Is that, I can't remember if it's South. I think it's South Congress area, right off of South Congress. Mm-hmm. But 
Cosmic Coffee, um, La Vaca, South Lamar has got a really cool area where it's like little bars you can kind of walk to in that, or restaurants, same mm-hmm. thing. That's dope, bro. Yeah. yeah oh, dude, you got to check out, sorry to cut you off, no, check out uh, Patrizzi's. Patrizzi's. It's on Manor Road. It's like, you're pretty close to it. You'd probably be only 15 minutes or so. Yeah. It's like a food truck setup, but they do uh, all handmade pasta from scratch. What? <sighs> I got to show you this, though. Dude, yeah, please. That's awesome, man. There's Dude. so much stuff. I, I was looking at the map yesterday, just, like, trying to see what was around. Mm-hmm. And there's a little coffee truck. Um, It's like a food truck, but for coffee. Oh, that's cool, yeah. It's called Neptune's Coffee. Shout out to them. Hopefully, I get some video work from them, too. But um, That'd be sweet. Yeah, dude, it looks so cool. There's a whole bunch of stuff all around. There's, like, it's it's literally endless, like you said. Oh, my gosh. Dude, send me that. Send me that on uh, Instagram, and then I'll, I'll tell Taylor we'll have to go to that. Yeah, dude, that's a good idea though. Once a week, so you're not like overdoing it. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, <laughs> if we wanted to go out and do more, and like we're gonna meet up with friends and stuff like that, then obviously we'll go to more places. But like, typically our little setup has been like, all right, look, at least once a week, like yeah, on the weekend, if we're not gonna do anything, like we need to go out and go do something. Yeah. So. What is your uh, what's your lady doing for work? Is she is she working down here? She's a teacher. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. So she's the one that can deal with kids. I'm, that's cool. I'm on like the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. So kids just kind of annoy me at this point. <laughs> but but no, she's uh she's really liked it. She's working at uh, Barton Hills Elementary. Okay. So over by Barton Creek area, she really likes the school, loves the job. That's she's, awesome. She's man. doing uh, fourth grade ELA. Wow. So I think she's going to move to science, yeah. How crazy is that, man? Taking after me, <laughs> science. Yeah. That's <laughs> wild, dude. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty wild. So, I mean, it's weird seeing everyone, or just seeing, like, everyone from the high school, you know what I mean, from Granbury, just, like, yeah. growing up and, like, getting jobs, stuff mm-hmm. like that, and just being further in their career. It's, it's yeah. interesting. It's super interesting, man. Like, some of the people you never would think they're, they'd be doing what they're doing, and Mm-hmm. It's very, very interesting to see what paths people take. Yeah, and avenues. Like I didn't know you'd be over here. I thought you were a Fort Worth guy for life, man. Yeah, you and me both. But I mean, yeah. once I moved here, I was like, uh, after like that four month period, I was talking about. I was like, dude, this place is really fun. Yeah, like it's a really good time. So I don't know. I I can see myself being here uh, for a little while at least. Yeah, I want to. If I'm gonna live here, I want to definitely get like the full Austin experience. Exactly. I, I don't want to leave after a year. Or so exactly. And I think right now, how far are you from downtown? Ten minutes. That's so cool. We're about we're about ten minutes from the domain. Oh, dude, domain's a sweet area yeah. too, though. That's a fun one. And we're about twenty minutes from downtown, so it's like we're that, that's not bad at all. That's a quick solid. Uber too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, that was the whole point. I told I told Taylor, I was like, if we're going to move closer, I want to be in Uber right away. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to drink and drive if we go down to six or if we go down somewhere. Like, I want to have to not worry about that and yeah. not worry about having to pay an arm and a leg for an Uber or something. Mm-hmm. Dude, I mean, even those, some of the, but that <laughs> is key. Like, yeah. if you're going out, like, you can't live too far because it, then it just ruins your plans. It's like, all right, well, I guess one of us is not going to be drinking exactly. tonight. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, dude, some of those Ubers can get a little, uh, a little pricey. Yeah, yeah, I bet, man. Yeah, so. but dude, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to get together, go yeah. out downtown Rainy Street, or if you're trying to come south of the river. Dude, I'm only like 25 minutes south of the river now, so I'm like, I'm down for whatever. Hit me up, dude. Let's go. Uh, we'll go south of Mar area or something like that, or South Congress. Yeah, I'm so down for that, man. I want to. I truly want to just experience as much as I can. Yeah, and then like. The comedy scene down here. I don't know if you like. You listen to Joe Rogan's podcast? Yeah, I listen to Joe Rogan's. I want to get more into it. I know that um, Tom Segura is moving here too, and I think he already did. He did move here. Yeah. I oh, think he so. did. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm behind on the podcast that I I'm think, listening to. Uh, it's dude. I that's all. I, all I listen to his podcast. I'm an idiot. You know what's crazy is like I'm, I'm starting to realize like, okay, Aaron, if you stop, if you don't stop listening to other people's ideas and thoughts, that's the <laughs> only gonna way. You're going to start taking them. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so I got to, I'm starting to listen to more music now. And then yeah. a lot of the times I would like, won't listen to anything. Have you ever done that? You ever just sat in the car and not listen to anything? Oh yeah. It's kind of weird, but it's very like peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. I used to drive, I used to live in Marble Falls. And mm-hmm. so I would drive an hour to Austin every day, like to do photos. And then, um, I would just like for half the car ride, I'd just be listening in silence and like listening to my thoughts and trying to think of different things. And mm-hmm. and then you start to listen to these podcasts and then you just kind of mindlessly 
and mindlessly just absorbing stuff mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is you know i love the format i do i truly love it because it sounds like they're talking to you more. yeah exactly and i i like that personal like mm-hmm. connection you get with the, the people and stuff but yeah like you can't overdo it with podcasts and i'm kind of to that point where i'm like okay i gotta chill out on the podcast listen that's to music or something that's where i am dude do you listen to um two bears one cave yeah Two Bears, One Cave is one of my favorites. It's so that, funny, bro. Dude, it's hilarious. That one's funny. And then uh, This Is Important. Who's that one? It is the cast of Workaholics. So oh, that's all four of them, though, with the three roommates and then um, Kyle, too. Kyle Nuichek, who <laughs> was the drug dealer on the show. Yeah. I haven't heard that one yet, but I've, I I saw that they had one, and that's dude, freaking it's, awesome. It's hilarious. Yeah. Really? They're, it's just like the show of them just <laughs> talking. It's so funny. That's so awesome, bro. It's mm-hmm. so wild. Like, I... I really would love nothing more. Like this is kind of like my JRE type podcast, right? Very similar in some mm-hmm. ways. And um, I would love to have a podcast that was just silly, silly, goofy times. Like that was kind of separate from this one, but it's a lot to have two podcasts if you're not getting paid to do it. So, and that's you also, a, that's you also, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. You also have to know like, like who you, who you connect with, who you vibe with, who you're funny with. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I don't have anybody like that over here. So yeah. 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 It's interesting, bro. It is, it is. So Josh, do you have any um do you have any like projects coming up, social media's coming up, or not social media's but like projects so we can shout you out? Um, I mean nothing nothing too specific. I'm trying to get started. I've been saying it forever, but I'm trying to get started on uh actually creating now that I'm moving into my new job, I feel like I'm gonna have a little bit more free time where mm-hmm. I'm not as like <coughs> dead tired in the evenings and stuff, so trying to get started on a fitness account, just like posting workouts, things like that, uh, giving tips, that kind of stuff. Cause I mean, it's something that I've always been interested in since I've started doing it. And so anytime I can help people out, I mean, I'll always send my workouts to people or just kind of try and help out where I can. If anyone has any questions, like, but I'm by no means any expert in it or anything like mm-hmm. that, but yeah. So trying to, trying to get that started and we'll see when it actually starts coming Do just yeah. the content stuff for it is, it's such a pain. It's it gives you a little bit of respect for the guys who do it right. Oh yeah, because I've tried it and it's like, dude, these guys that are doing it are just crushing it. Like they're putting out content just like that. Yeah. It's like, and if you don't have somebody to record for you, it's like it's either going to be not good quality or like you're going to like miss half your workouts because you're going to be out of the frame or something's yeah, going to be. Yeah, it's like, all right, so am I going to ask this like forty year old mom over here on the leg curl machine? Yeah. Like, do you want to video me doing this? Have you ever thought about? Do you have a tripod? Yeah, I do have the tripod. I wanted to do that on my phone. Um, I haven't done that. I was doing that back at home when I was in DFW, yeah. working out at my dad's gym. I was using a little tripod, but I need to start actually doing it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to, bro. I think, um, dude, if you want to do that, I think you could be. I think you'd be good at that, man. Because you, first of all, you're Jack. That's like the first part of it, right? Yeah. And then second of all, you're very knowledgeable and you're kind with your words and how you say stuff. So like, yeah. that's appealing to people. I think you should do it. I think you should go like all in on it and just try to like, I think it'd be fun, you know, more so than anything. Like, I think it would be too. And I mean, if I, if it got to the point where I was able to make any sort of money off it, even just like a minimal amount, it's something that I've enjoyed doing so much just that, uh, like on my own, it's like, why wouldn't I, if I can get content out, that's the hardest part. Yeah, it is. Then everything else I'm already doing. So why not try and make an account for it? Exactly, bro. I think that you should try Maybe mm-hmm. have Ryan hold the phone, bro, since he ain't lifting That's the weights. That's true, yeah, yeah. Ryan's not doing the lifting, so just have him record. Yeah. No, dude, but Ryan's been getting after it. He's been getting uh, getting pretty hefty now. He's Good, bulked bro. up a decent amount. Dang, bro, I can't let Ryan get bigger than me, man. Oh, dude, he's he's there. He's there. What? Okay, okay. So just putting some fire in you. Step up my game, dude. <laughs> Come hit a workout with us. What time do y'all work out? Um... I don't know. We'll switch it up. Sometimes we could hit a weekend workout or something, but usually we'll go in the mornings, like, six where do y'all so. work out at uh either the gold's gym off of 290 over by manchaka or okay. um the one that's off of uh 183 like up in round rock we're right we're, by one yeah yeah we're right by it off of um i want to say it's either i think it's anderson mill okay yeah yeah so it's right off of there that's not too far from here mm-hmm. yeah bro let me know i'll hit one with y'all and I'll show you how to do it. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll uh, be appreciative of all your tips. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll, I'll 
thank you. You could thank me in advance. Yeah, charge a minimal fee. I'll record you for a minimal fee. Oh, okay, yeah. With my phone, dude. Well, do you have anything else to say, man? That's it. That um, shout outs. Like, shout outs to anybody. Uh, let's see. Shout out to um, I got a few. All right, let's see. So shout out to one, the Gold's Gym Morning Crew. Yeah. Whiskey Morning Coffee Crew. Yeah. Suit. Rhino. New Dog Indy. Indy. And Old Dog River. And I guess Lexi. And the lady. And the lady. That's awesome, bro. No, yeah. So it's been um, pretty cool. Yeah, I got the new dog, too. Just wanted to throw that in oh, there. Oh, yeah, man. A little Golden Doodle. Yeah, Golden Doodle. Those are cute. Those are cute dogs. Yeah, Those she's she's a handful. She's sweet, though. They're hypoallergenic, right? Oh, yeah. So oh, it's nice. nice. No shedding, nothing like that, that's which great. is nice, too, because uh, I guess, like, similar to your dog, my dog, River, um, can't take him out. Yeah. Can't take him out anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's like if we're going somewhere, he's just going to be, like, frantic and panicking and then try to attack something. Yeah. So it's like... Can't take him out, but at least with the new dog now, we can kind of bring yeah. her along. Austin's good for that. Austin's good for, like, it's dog like friendly stuff. the biggest dog city I've ever been yeah, in. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Bro, thank you so much for coming. Um, shout out your social media real quick. And, like, you have that fitness account, so shout that one out, and I'll tag you in the, in the post. Oh, my man. Okay. Uh, yeah, dude, thanks for having me on, yeah, first buddy. off. I've had a great time. But um, Josh Yarbs is the Instagram. Uh, Yarbs with four S's. <laughs> and then Josh Yarbs Fit is the fitness one. It's on my other page too. But cool. I'll yeah, check you. that out. And then give Whiskey Morning Coffee a follow too. Yeah, Whiskey Morning Coffee on uh, Instagram, baby. Yeah, it says it on the bag. Order, order some, uh, order some brew. Do you have a Do you have a promo code? Uh, I do. I need to ask Evan if it's still on there. I had one. It would have been just Josh, I think. Like for people to. Yeah, ten percent off. I think is what it was. It was just Ayo. Josh. Hey, Josh for 10% off, baby, until I get one and then you, use code Aaron. Yeah, you know who to hit up for the discount. <laughs> All right, bro. Thank you for coming, man. Yeah, no problem.